for one, you said that the apocrypha is not canon, right? Correct. Okay, what are, where can you show me in the 66 canonical books, as they call them, the Feast of Dedication? Can you demonstrate? I can't remember It's not in there. But it is in the Apocrypha. Let me let me give you an example. So in the Feast of Dedication, give me John chapter 10 and verse 22. Guys, the point I'm trying to make is nobody's saved by the law, so why are you preaching law? Hold on a second. Give me Matthew 5 and verse 17. Let's see what Christ said. First, let's get John 10 and 22 because the Feast of Dedication is only mentioned in the book of Maccabees. Okay, you're not going to find it in the yeah, Levitical law. I, I know law. what you're talking about now, but Matthew Well, you, you clearly don't because you no, said it's not canon. When Christ kept... Christ kept the Feast of Dedication. Give me John 10 and 22. This is the book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. Bring it out. And it was at Jerusalem, uh -huh. the Feast, the what? The the feast uh -huh. of the Dedication. Show me that Show me that in the Levitical Law. Ready, set, go. It's not in there. It's in the book of 2 Maccabees, the fourth chapter. That, that's Christ kept. Keep reading. Keep reading. And it was winter. And you... Go ahead. And Yahushai walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So watch this. Give me Matthew 5 and 17. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Let's hear the words of Christ. You said we don't have to keep the law. That's what you're saying, right? We're not saved by the law, right? We're not saved by the law. What did James say in James 2 and 17? He says, faith without works is what? Works is not talking about works of the law. Faith without works is the, the Okay, works let's, let's deal with that. We're going to see. We're going to see if that works okay. is talking about the law or not. Give me Matthew 5 and verse 17. Because he said the law is fulfilled. Let's see. Ah, it is fulfilled. Let's see. In Christ. Let's see. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Let's the see, words let's of Let's see what God. Christ said versus what this man here is saying. Go ahead. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. And I haven't said he Hold on. You said, you said he fulfilled the he law. Fulfilled it. You said he fulfilled the he law. We're not saved fulfilled. by keeping the law. Keep oh, reading. God. Or the prophets. He said, don't think that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. This is the words of Christ, right? I am not come to destroy. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law. But to fulfill. But to fulfill. Does that mean he's saying to break God's laws? Which he did. He fulfilled the law. No, no, no. So what, what, is, what do you mean he fulfilled the law? What do you, what do you mean he fulfilled the law? He kept it perfectly. Okay, so that means, so you're saying, so, okay, so let's see what he fulfilled. Let's get Luke 24 and 44. Let's see what he fulfilled. Because he tells us. Luke 24 and 44. Because you don't know. You don't have the understanding. Give me Luke 24 and 44. I know. Be patient and listen. You might learn something, old man. Give me See, Luke 24 you're, you're and 44. Law and you're trying to put everything back on the law. Me, no, keep, keep, stay where you're at. Give me Matthew 5 and verse 17. Stay where you're at. Give me Luke 24 and 44. Let's see what he fulfilled. This and then the, we're going to continue on what he says. Go ahead. This is the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44. Let's see what Christ fulfilled. And the words of Yahweh Shai. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you. Right. While I was yet with you. While, while I was yet with you. Right. This is the words of Christ. Go ahead. That all things must be fulfilled. That all things must be fulfilled. Right. Which he did. Which were written in the law of Moses. Which were written in the law of Moses. Right. There's one. Which he Go did. ahead. And in the prophets. In the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Obadiah, all the prophets, too, right? And in the Psalms. In the Psalms, right? Concerning me. Concerning what? Concerning me. These are the things that he fulfilled. So what is he talking about in the law, in the prophets, and in the Psalms? Let's demonstrate. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18. Let's go to the law. To say, if you're trying to say that Christ Hold on a second. Be patient and listen. You might learn you something. Might learn something you too, might learn something. Listen. Why does it listen. say Christ is give me, the no, just give me Deuteronomy 28 the and 28. Or 28 and 18. Okay. You don't, you're not understanding. You're not understanding what I he's saying. Go ahead. This no, you don't understand. You don't understand, Testament. man. First of all, the word of God was only given to Israel. That's what the Bible says. Okay? That's right. Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 18. Everybody. We'll deal with the gospel. Gospel we'll deal with the gospel. We will deal with the gospel. with the gospel. All you Decently are... and in order. You're not being in order. You're just scoffing right now. I'm not scoffing. You're scoffing. We're reading the word of God and you're scoffing the word of God. Go ahead, King. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Uh, Deuteronomy 18, 18. Deuteronomy 18, 18. Only Christ and the gospel saved anybody. Hold on a second, man. No be, hold, before you read that, give me 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. No one's 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Of Deuteronomy chapter 18. 
Verse 18. So when he said he came to fulfill the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. We're going to deal with that, and then we will deal with the gospel as well. Go ahead. I will raise them up a prophet uh -huh. from among their brethren. So here it is. Moses is speaking about the coming of Christ. He says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, right? Like unto thee. Uh huh. And will put my words in his mouth. Right. Yeah. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Right. So this is talking about Christ, right? Go ahead. Verse 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. Speak in his name, the Most High's name, right? I will require it of him. Right. Verse 20. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, uh -huh. which I have not commanded him to speak. Right, anyone who is speaking not on the words of God, right? Or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Other gods, Buddha, Krishna, Allah, whatever. All these other gods and, and, and vain, vain religions. Go ahead. Okay. If Even that prophet shall die. Shall what? Shall oh, die. So, this is one of the prophecies that Moses spoke in the law. Give me Genesis 49, okay, starting at verse 8. Now, wait a second. Genesis 49, he was verse 8. Of Christ, though, was yes, God? he was speaking of okay, Christ. So the words that Christ spoke in 628 and 629, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he sent. Absolutely. There, there's there's no saves. contention there. And that's what there's saves. no contention with what you just said there. I agree with you there. That's what Well, saves. I'm giving you the understanding on what he fulfilled. He didn't fulfill to take away the law. He didn't he fulfill taking away. No, what does that mean to even fulfill the law? I'm sh I'm showing you. He said the things that were written of me in the law, in the prophets, or in the Psalms. Now give me Genesis 49 and verse 8. Genesis, hold on, man. Hold on. What? You don't have to listen. If you don't want to listen, don't listen. Genesis 49 and 8. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 8. Go ahead. Judah. Thou art he whom thy brethren... Stop, stop, stop. We're not, we're not saying the law alone. We never said that. We said the law in the faith. Works in faith. It has to be accompanied with both. Yes, it is. It's both. Give me Romans 2 and 13. Give me Romans 2 and 13. Go ahead, King. Judah... Hold on a second. You don't understand what that's saying. Hold on a second. Go ahead. Judah... You don't. You really don't. Go ahead. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. We're going to deal with order. I'm still dealing with the fulfilled before we get to the gospel and saving by the law. So what, what you're doing is just scoffing the word of God right now. Yes, you are. Go ahead. You don't even know what we're saying. You're just up here scoffing the word of God, you devil. Go ahead. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. You're a thy devil. father's children shall uh -huh. bow down before thee. Hey, this is what you got coming, Esau. This is what you got coming. You're going to bow down to the children of Israel. Thus saith the Lord. Go ahead. That's right. Verse 9. Judah is a lion's well. Uh -huh. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Right. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. Right. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Talking about the tribe of Judah, but it's going into uh, our Lord and Savior, Hamashiach Yahweh, as we're going to find out. Go ahead. That's right. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Now, why does it say the scepter shall not depart from Judah? Because Judah is the line of kings, and that's the line that Christ came from. He came from the tribe of Judah. That's why it will never depart from Judah, because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Ah, Go ahead. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Right, keep reading. Until Shiloh comes. Shiloh is Christ. Go ahead. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be this is another prophecy what he said written in the law now let's give another one in the law give me numbers 24 and 17. then uh, we'll get the prophets and then we'll get the psalms wait, come on. we got to deal in order but that man just came up as a scoffer because that's what they do every week esau don't got no spirit in him okay the spirit in him is not upright but we got to deal with order he wants to come up and say that the law is done away with Christ died to fulfill the law. We don't have to teach the law. We don't Amen, keep brother. that. That guy is, is is the problem. That 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 mindset has plagued our people, and that is why we are under the curse. Is, is because we have listened to people like that from time and time again. But we got to rebuke that madness now. Numbers twenty four and seventeen. Numbers chapter twenty four and verse seventeen. Huh. I shall see him, but not now. Right. I shall behold him, but not not. Right. There shall come a star out of Jacob. Who's that star that came out of Jacob? That bright and morning star talking about Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. 
He's the star, the bright and morning star. Come, Go ahead. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel. That scepter, that same scepter that shall not depart from Judah, because he is the king of kings. Go ahead. And shall smite the corners of Moab. Right. And destroy all the children of Shep. So the children of Shep is talking about all these nations, the children that came from Adam, because we all come from Adam, but the people also whom God has chosen. So this is another prophecy that was in the law of the coming of Christ. So when he says, I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill, he's talking about what Moses spoke of him, what the prophets spoke of him, what David spoke about him in the song. So now let's deal with the prophets. Let's get the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, starting at verse 2. Let's demonstrate. This man don't got no understanding whatsoever. Up here just running his loud old mouth. Every week, every week we're coming out here bringing out the word of God, and here comes the enemy trying to scoff the word. It's funny, yeah, this is our platform. Trying to tell us how to yeah. That man got something coming. Watch. 53, 22? 53, starting at verse 2. Bob Kishaw. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 53 and verse 2. Give me the book of um, Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Right. And as a root out of a dry ground. Right. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Speaking of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, he looked like any other man. There was nothing that stood out about his looks. He was an average looking person. Go ahead. Verse three, he is despised and rejected of men. Right. A man of sorrow. Right. And acquitted with grief. Right. Salakia, so acquainted with grief. And acquainted with grief. Why? Because he had to carry the load, the sin of Israel. Go ahead. And we hid as it were our faces from him right he was despised and we esteemed him not uh -huh. verse four surely he hath borne our griefs right and carried our sorrow because he took the punishment that we all deserve he became that sacrificial lamb the atonement for the nation of israel's sin wow. all praises to the most high god for giving us his only begotten son this is one of the prophecies that was mentioned in the prophets that he spoke of in Luke 24 and 44 and Matthew 5 and 17. Go ahead. Yet we did esteem him stricken, right? smitten of Yahweh, right? and afflicted. Uh -huh. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. You see that? He was wounded wow. for our transgressions, right? <laughs> he was bruised for our iniquities. He took wow. the sins of Israel. That's why in Acts 5 and 30, he, he lets us know that he shed his blood for us. Repentance and forgiveness for the nation of Israel through his blood, ah. his sacrifice. Go ahead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh -huh. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, praise. So this is another ah. prophecy in the prophets. Give me Isaiah chapter 9, starting at verse 6. Just demonstrating a couple on why he said he, he didn't come to destroy but to fulfill. You see, simple-minded Christians, these, these devils, think that Christ came to do away with the laws of God. That is wicked, and that is the doctrine of devils. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Right. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Right. And his name shall be called Wonderful, uh -huh. Counselor, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, right, the Prince of Peace. So this is another prophecy. He was that child that was given. That's why in Matthew one and twenty one it says, "A child shall be born, and ye shall call his name Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from wow. their sins." These are just various prophecies. Micah spoke about them. All the prophets spoke about the coming of Christ. Wow. Now let's demonstrate. A matter of fact, just real quick, give me Second Ezra chapter seven, I believe, starting at verse twenty-four, because this Ezra actually lists him by name of his coming. Give me Psalms twenty-two, King, starting at verse eighteen. So we're gonna talk about him in the Psalms. He came to fulfill. Now the law, the law doesn't matter no more. You see that? That's you're literally telling people that they don't have to obey God when you say that stuff. It's wicked. It's wicked and perverse when you when you speak yeah. that way. Our people, uh, 
Tell the world, sister, you got a minute for the word of God, sister? Yeah. Okay. Second, second Ezra chapter seven, starting at verse twenty-four, I believe it is. Might be twenty-two. Let's see. Uh, one sec. Bear with me. Um. Right there. Start at verse twenty-eight. Twenty-seven. Start at verse twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. This is the book of Second Ezra. Chapter 7, verse 27. God. And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. Shall see the wonders. Talking about what's coming, the, the, the destruction that's coming. Go ahead. For my son, Yahawashai. For my son, Yahawashai. Ezra, Ezra, in the book of Second Ezra, he mentioned him by name. Go ahead. Shall be revealed with those that be with him. Uh-huh. And they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years within 400 years this was the time of ezra until the time of hamashiach the lord was telling us when christ was going to come on the scene that's why he said the law and the prophets and in the psalms fulfilled that's what he meant not that we don't have to keep god's laws no more uh, let's get psalms 22 starting at verse 18. give me the book of psalms chapter 2 from the top it's the book of psalms chapter 22 at verse 18. They part my garments. They did what? They part my garments. This is during the crucifixion. Here it is. David is prophesying what was going to happen during our Lord's crucifixion. They parted his garments. Go ahead. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. And cast lots for his vesture, right? But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength, haste thee to help me. Right. Deliver my soul from the sword, uh -huh. my darling, from... The power of the dog. The power of the dog, calling the Edomites dogs or foxes. Because that's who they are. They're dogs. Go ahead. Save me from the lion's mouth. Right. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. Right. Now jump up to, let me see. Let me see. That's where you are. Yeah, 22. Um, did when the crowd heard. Jump up to verse... Up to verse 15. 15. Psalms chapter 22 and verse 15. Wake them up. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, uh -huh. and my tongue cleaveth unto my jaws. Right. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. To the dust of death. Why? Because they crucified him. He died for the nation of Israel. Go ahead. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. The Romans compassed him. The assembly of the wicked, right? They pierced my hands. They did what? They, they pierced, pierced my hands. hands. Uh-huh. And my feet. So this is um, this is one of the Psalms that gave an account of the coming of the Hamashiach. Give me Psalms 2 from the top. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 2 from the top. Go back to Matthew 5 and 17. Why do the heathen rage? Right. And the people imagine a vain thing. Just like that man imagining a vain thing and raging. The heathen raging. Go ahead. Verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together right. against the Lord. You see that? Against the Lord, speaking against his word, speaking against the truth, speaking pompously and arrogantly. That's what that man was doing. Go ahead. And against his anointed. Against his anointed. <laughs> against the Hamashiach, saying that Christ came to do away with the law. That's not why he came. He didn't come to say we don't have to do uh, keep God's laws. That's blasphemy. Go ahead. Saying, let us break their bands asunder. Right. And cast away their cords from us. And that's what they try to do. They try to take away the strength of Israel, like it says in Psalms 83. Go ahead. Verse 4. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. They're going to be a laughing stock. Derision mean they're going to be in a laughing stock. The Most High God is going to get the final laugh when it's all said and done. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Verse 5. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. Right. And vex them in his sore displeasure. Because he's sore displeased with these other nations for all the rape, rob, and murder against the children of Israel. All the oppression and affliction that they have imposed on God's people and against his word. Bring it out. Go ahead. Verse 6. Yet... I have set my king 
upon my holy hill. And who is that king? The king of kings ah. and the Lord of lords, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. He is that king that he has set upon that holy hill. Ah. Go ahead. Of Zion. Uh huh. Zion, you Israelites, you so called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, you are Zion. That's right. Read. Verse 7 I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. Uh huh. This day have I begotten thee. You see that? He is the only begotten. Hence, John 3 16, this world loves the. Uh, 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 mishandle and abuse for uh, god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son this is another prophecy in the psalms speaking of the coming of hamashiach the christ uh, go ahead verse eight ask of me and i shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and that's what's happening he's going <laughs> to rule over these nations and smash them like clay pots thus saith the lord go ahead and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Right. Verse 9. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. He's going to break wow. them with a rod of iron. Go right. ahead. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. This is this is the words of the Lord. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen to all those who have oppressed God's people and have mishandled his word and have objected to the word of God. Go ahead. Right. Verse 10. Be wise. Now, therefore... O ye kings, be instructed, <clears throat> ye judges of the earth. Right, and who's the kings and judges of the earth that is speaking of? You Israelites. Ah. We are supposed to be the judges and the kings and priests. But our people have failed and lost their crown because of sin and wickedness and evil. We have to come back to our rightful heritage and stand up as children of the living God. That's right. Go ahead. Verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear. Do what now? Serve, Serve the, the Lord, Lord with, with fear. fear. Uh-huh. And rejoice with trembling. You see that? Go ahead. Verse 12. Kiss the son. Do what? Kiss, Kiss the, the son. son. Right? Lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. You see that? We have to have faith in our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. That's right. This is speaking, this whole chapter is speaking of Christ, of Hamashiach. Go ahead. When his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. You see that you are blessed if you put your trust in Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Go ahead. Chapter 3. Oh, no, I sit on that. That's the point. So now, read Matthew 5 and 17 again. He Matthew. came to fulfill. He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the law. He took away the law. You, know, you, you guys are teaching people have to obey the law to be saved. Well, let's see what the Bible says. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. We're not going to speak our own words. We're going to speak the words of God. The words, right. the words of Hamashiach. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. So once again, he said, don't let it cross your mind. He opens up by saying, think not. Uh, Why did he have to say that? Because he knew there was a lot of people that was going to be speaking that madness that we don't have to obey God. That his laws don't matter. He said, don't let that cross your mind. I did not come to do away with God's laws. Uh, Go ahead. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Or the prophets. For all those that have a problem with the Old Testament, they think that the Old Testament is done away with. Christ said, you better think again. That's right. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He said, I didn't come to destroy what uh, they said. I actually came to prove what they said. That's right. That's all he's saying. He's not saying I came to suppress God's laws. Now the laws don't matter. Wow. He's saying everything that was written of me is written in the law and in the prophets. Period. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you. For truly I say unto you, Christ said. Till heaven and earth pass. Till heaven and earth, and I still see it, heavens and the earth, we're standing on it right now. Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, one comma or one period, shall in no wise pass from the law. From the what? From, from the, the law. law. From the what? From, from the, the law. law. That man don't know what he was talking about up here, just scoffing and running his old mouth. Go ahead. Till all be fulfilled. All has not been fulfilled. The second coming of Christ has not transpired. The judgment upon these nations have not happened yet. Okay, right. go ahead. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments. Anyone who wants to break one of the least commandments, okay? Not wearing their fringes, eating abominable foods, okay? 
sleeping with their brothers, or any one of the laws, shaving off their beard. Anybody wants to, if you're an Israelite and you want to break and teach to not keep God's laws, go ahead. Uh, and shall teach men so, right? he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. See, if that man would have been quiet, and just been patient and listen, he would have heard the words of our Lord and Savior. He said, you can't teach that. If you teach in people that they don't have to keep the laws of God, you're going to be spoken of as the least. Well, first of all, the Edomites ain't going to even be there, but as servants until their destruction. Uh, I want to make that clear. Okay. But that man and his philosophy has plagued this earth, teaching people that the laws of God don't matter. But people understand, please don't steal from me. Don't kill my relatives. Don't sleep with my wife. They understand that when it knocks at their door. But when it comes to them obeying God, oh, it doesn't matter. We don't have to keep the laws of God. Oh, really? I want to see you go rob a bank and tell the judge we don't have to keep the keep the laws of God. God. Say that to the judge when you're sitting in front of the courtroom, that it's okay to go steal from your neighbor. God. It's not going to happen. God. And common sense should tell somebody that. Keep reading. God. So like it. Matthew 5. And pick it up at verse 19. God. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Right. But whosoever shall do. Anyone who does the commandments. And teach them. And teach the commandments. The same shall be called great. Shall be what? Shall be, be called, called great. Uh-huh. In the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping that we have a seat in the kingdom of heaven where we could be called great. For doing and teaching the word of God as he is instructing us to do. Keep reading. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribe. Now he gives us some understanding that the how important the law really is. He says, except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes. Meaning what? The Pharisees and the scribes, they taught the law, but they broke the law. So you can't just be huh. a hearer of the word only. You got to be a doer, doer of huh. the word. Go ahead. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Period. That's what the Lord said. If you don't, if your righteousness doesn't exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, Matthew 19 and verse 16. Then we're going to deal with the gospel because that was his next thing that he said. You all got to preach the gospel. Y'all out here telling people they got to keep the laws of God. That's not the gospel. Okay. Matthew 19 and 16. Let's hear the words of Christ again. Con. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. Con. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Oh, so he says to the young rich man comes to Hamashiach, to Christ, and says, what do I have to do? What good thing do I have to do that I may in inherit eternal life, get everlasting life, right? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Uh -huh. That is God. He says, God is good. There's only one that's good, and that's God. He's given all praise, honor, and glory to the Father in heaven. Uh -huh. Go ahead. But if thou wilt enter into life. But if you will enter into the kingdom of heaven if you will enter into life what do we got to do keep the commandment what the lord say keep the commandment but that man said we don't got to do that that man said he fulfilled the law so we don't have to teach the law when christ literally says if we will inherit eternal life we must keep, keep the, the commandments command. keep reading uh, uh, he said unto him which yahweh said thou shalt do no murder then he lists one of the laws. He says, thou shalt do no murder, right? Thou shalt not commit adultery. No adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Right? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh-huh. Honor thy father and thy mother. These are all laws. These are the big ten that he's listing. Go ahead. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Which encompasses, like it says in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh -huh. And to love the, uh, our neighbor as ourselves. On these two hang all the law. That's what he's saying. All 613, he says, will be encompassed in those two. Meaning what? If you love the Lord, you're going to keep the Sabbath day. If you love the Lord, you're going to wear your fringes. If you love the Lord, you're not going to shave your beard. If you love the Lord, you're going to keep the new moon. 
These are things that how you love the Lord. If you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal from him, God. lie to him, That's rob right. him, sleep with his wife. Okay, do usury on him like the brother was just going into. That's right. Okay, we got to we got to understand that the whole law is summarized in loving God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Now, first Corinthians six and nine. And then let's get the gospel. I say 61. This is the book of first Corinthians chapter six and verse nine. Good. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Once again, here it is. Now, Paul is saying it, how important it is to keep the laws. He says, don't you understand that the unrighteous, those who are wicked and evil will not get into the kingdom? Anyone who wants to break God's laws, they're not going to make it. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. That man was up here to deceive people. Go ahead. Neither fornicators. Anyone who wants to fornicate. Okay. Sexual immorality, spiritually or literally, right? Nor idolaters. Worshiping pagan gods and pagan religions, right? Nor adulterers. Right? Cheating on your wife, cheating on the Lord, right? Nor effeminate. Anyone who wants to be a homosexual, anyone who wants to carry themselves, carry themselves as the opposite sex. Go ahead. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind still dealing with like lasciviousness concupiscence homosexuality perversion uh child molestation any of that stuff go ahead verse 10 nor thieves nor thieves huh. nor covetous nor coveted wanting what your neighbor has right nor drunkard anyone who see where where's that at in the big 10 that's right huh where's the feminine in the big 10 okay this is how you know that the, the entire law the one jot or one tittle, like Yahweh Shai said, will not be done away with. Go ahead. Nor revilers. Or revilers. Where is that at? Those who want to party all the time, turn up and riot. Where is that at in the Big Ten? But God wants us to understand this is important. If that's it, if that's a spirit that you have where you just want to be a drunkard, be at the bar every night, you're not going to get into the kingdom. Go ahead. Nor extortioners. Taking advantage of your brothers. Like Yach and I was just going into usury. Extorting your people. You ain't going to make it. Go ahead. Shall inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. So newsflash, brothers and sisters. If you want to get into the kingdom, which we're trying to inspire with our people, give them That's hope. Right. You have to obey the laws of God. That's right. Give me Isaiah 61. Give me Romans 2 and 13 just real fast before you get there. Romans chapter 2 and verse 13. This one. Romans 2 verse 13. That's why we can't listen to that bugged out yeah. nonsense. Yeah. Christianity has plagued the minds of our people for too long. Uh, and we have to wake up in these last days and understand we're going to be scoffed. Okay. We're going to be ridiculed. We're going to be oppressed by these people. And we might even possibly get killed by these nations or right. people for standing up for righteousness but if you do so you have a spot in the kingdom this is the book of romans chapter 2 and verse 13 god for not the hearers of the law are just before yahweh not the hearers of the law are just before yahweh right god. but the doers the what but, but the, the doers, doers uh -huh. of the law shall be justified you see that shall be justified you can't just hear the law you gotta do the law thus saith the lord now let's deal with the gospel let's get isaiah 61. this is the book of isaiah chapter 61. You, give me luke, verse one, luke 4 starting at verse 17. Reigns. the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord has anointed me to preach good tidings ah. unto the meek. uh-huh he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Right. To proclaim liberty to the captives. To the captives. And who has been held captive? Just real quick, Joel, give me Isaiah 5 and 13. I'm going I'm to pass you the mic. Isaiah 5 and 13. Hold your at, King. Isaiah Bring chapter 5, verse 13. The gospel is uniquely for you children of Israel. It's not for ah, everyone. That's right. This is the book 
of Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. Bring it out. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Gone in where? Into captivity. captivity. Uh -huh. Because they have no knowledge. No what? No, no knowledge. knowledge. Right? And their honorable men are famished. Right? And their multitude dried up with thirst. Uh -huh. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. You see that? Now our people are in hell. Not the not Hades as in the grave necessarily or uh, the lake of fire, but the conditions that we're in. There, there's three types of hells that are mentioned in scripture. The conditions that we have came down low and lost our crown, then there's Sheol or their grave. That is also called hell according to scripture. But then there's the lake of fire that's gonna happen with the thermonuclear destruction and the, and the, uh, the fire that God will send. Okay, that's also classified as hell in the Bible. So we have gone into captivity, the nation of Israel, because of no knowledge. And what is knowledge? Obedience, Obedience to the laws of God. God. Read, where, uh, read that one more time, King. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, from the top. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings. Good tidings are good news. Unto the meek. To the meek, to those that are humble, right? He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Who are the brokenhearted, right? To proclaim liberty to the captives. Those who have been taken captive. You are the brokenhearted, you nation of Israel. The ones that have been oppressed and subjugated, the downtrodden. Yeah. Go ahead. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Give me Isaiah 42 and 22, just real quick. Hold where you're at. Uh, Isaiah 42 and 22. How you doing, brother? Y'all got, got a couple minutes, y'all. It's time for the Word of God, brothers and sisters. Please take a flyer. Take a flyer, young sisters. Okay, y'all already got one. All, right, all praises, all praises. There's one in Espanol, too. Y'all get one in Espanol? All, right, all praises, all praises. You guys are Israelites. You guys are God's chosen people, brothers. All right. Come on, Isaiah 42 and 22. This is the book. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 22. Bring it up! But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. So the Lord wants us to understand that we are snared in holes and hid in prison houses. It's a twofold meaning. Our people are literally incarcerated, uh, a lot of them. We fill up the jail houses in the, in the penal system. Okay, they got their foot on our neck in a heavy way, but spiritually, we are bound as well. We are still held captive. We are yet this day in our captivity, like the Bible says. Go ahead. They are for a prey, and none delivereth. Right. For a spoil, and none saith restore. Watch this. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will give ear to this, right? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Right. Who gave Jacob for a spoil? Gave who? Gave Jacob, Jacob for a spoil. Gave everyone. Gave, gave Jacob, Jacob for a spoil. Right? And Israel to the robbers. Right? Did not the Lord. Did not who? Did, did not, not the Lord. Lord. Right? He against whom we have sinned. He against whom we have sinned. The Most High God allowed this to happen because of our own disobedience. But because of that. He created the method of salvation through the blood of his only begotten son. That's why John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoso believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We are the ones that are held in captivity and bondage. Read where you're at, King. Continue on. God, God. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, right. to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. And what? In Zion. Zion. That mourn in Zion. This is the demographic who the gospel is for. We are, we are the ones that are held captive. We are the brokenhearted, okay? We are Zion, you Israelites. Go ahead. To give unto them beauty for ashes uh -huh. and oil for joy right. for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. If you got ears to hear, this is all talking about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Uh, Righteousness. The Most High God is going to give us beauty for ashes. Okay, He's going to give us those garments. He's going to give us that oil. Okay, Clothe us in righteousness. Give us that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Uh, so where we're going to be that light. We're, we will be back in that royal position. Now, Luke chapter 4, starting at verse 17. 
This is the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So here it is. This is Jehoshaphat. He got the book of Isaiah, right? And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18, the words of Jehoshaphat. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, uh -huh. because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Right. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, right. to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. This is all talking about you Israelites, okay, who have lost their way, who have lost their spiritual sight, okay, who are following... The ways of this world, God has opened up salvation for you through the blood of his only begotten son. Uh, if you will just return unto him, receive him. Go ahead. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Verse 19. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Right, and that's what we're out here to do. To, to, to bring the message of hope to our people. But in doing so, we have to teach obedience to the law statutes and commandments in the faith in hamashiach ah. that's the only way this is going to happen that's why once again james 2 and 17 faith without works is dead that's right. give me revelation 22 14 read what you got king joel 3 and 16 demonstrate who's eye on this one more time this is the book of joel chapter 3 and verse 16. Huh. the lord also shall roar out of zion out of zion and utter his voice from jerusalem from jerusalem right and the heavens and the earth shall shake. Uh -huh. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. Of who now? Of, of his, his people. people. Right. And the strength of the children of Israel. Of uh, the children of Israel. That's who Zion is. And just in case someone doesn't believe who his people is, give me 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 24. Israelites are the people of God. That's that right. is his children. Thus saith the Lord. 2 Samuel 7 and verse 24. Before you get that thing. Second Samuel chapter 7 verse 24. This is the book of Second Samuel chapter 7 and verse 24. Read. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel. Thy people who? Thy, thy people, people Israel, Israel. Right. To be a people unto thee forever. For how long? Forever. forever. Right. And thou, Lord, art become their God. Become as their God. Like it says in Joel 2 and 27, as we always like to bring out and quote. Ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, God. and that I am the Lord your Lord, God, God, and none else. God. Thus saith the Lord. Let's close with Revelation 22 and 14. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. The last book, the last chapter, and the last page of the Bible. Let's see what it says about obeying God. That's right. Blessed are they that do his commandments. No, the law, statutes, and commandments are done away with. Blessed, Blessed are, are they that, that do his commandments, right? that they may have right to the tree of life. Just like Christ uh, said in Matthew 19, if you will enter in life, uh, keep the commandments. Go uh, ahead. And may enter in through the gates into the city. And how many gates are there? Twelve, twelve gates written with the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Revelation chapter 21, verse 12 on down. That's, That's who those gates are for. The gates of the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Verse 15. For without our dogs. For without our dogs. These other nations, they're not getting in. The and same dogs that come past him round about when he was being crucified. God. Go ahead. And sorcery. Anyone who is practicing evil, witchcraft, sorcery, right? And whoremongers. Uh -huh. Adultery, fornication, any any anything that's associated with with sexual wickedness or sexual uh, spiritual fornication. Go ahead. Uh, and murderers. Anyone who wants to kill their brother, shed their brother's blood. And idolaters. Worshiping other gods, religions. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Uh, Anybody who wants to teach an opposition of the word of God, of truth and righteousness, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Thus saith the Lord. So our message to our people is that you are the Israelites and you must keep the law, statutes, and commandments in the faith in Hamashiach of Jesus the Christ as they call him ignorantly. Come on. And with that, oh, let's get Matthew 26. 
It's the book of Matthew, chapter 26, and verse 6. Now, when Yahawashai was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahawashai understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she hath for she hath wrought a good work upon me, for ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body. She did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. And with that we like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Amashiach, Yahweh Shai, Kwam Yashrala, Kwam Yashrala, Kwam Yashrala. Yeah, that is crazy just to, just to try to understand. I mean, I guess it's 